Let's talk about plagiarism for a bit. In case you're not hip to all the best YouTube drama, a video game YouTuber called Ouija the God put out a video recently entitled Why the Blue Yeti Sucks. The video is incredibly obnoxious, and this is me we're talking about here. The Blue Yeti is a $100 stainless steel toy. Everything good you heard about it, forget it. They're lies born from hobbyists with no concept of quality. Along with dismissing a fairly decent and affordable USB microphone for newer or young people who don't need professional quality, his voice is in this annoyingly performative tone. His audio is noticeably overproduced, and every sentence ends with him smugly droning the final word, and it's super good grating to listen to. But worse than any of that, almost all the video's content, style, arguments, and research is stolen. I'm here to tell you the Blue Yeti is a $100 stainless steel toy. Everything good you heard about it, forget it. They're lies born from hobbyists with no concept of quality. There's a lesser known YouTuber called Soul Brother Number 3. I've been a pretty big fan of his for over a year. I used a Blue Yeti for a while until seeing his video series, How to Be an Online Voice Actor, and taking notes about the results of better acoustics, placement, and the value of XLR microphones. In fact, when I was looking for a good preamp late last year, I paused one of his cutaway shots of his own setup and found a version of that one on eBay. He made a video about how to use DSLRs, and even though I haven't used those for a while, I got into Samyang lenses as a result of him mentioning them. Here's me plagiarizing that shot from the video with the exact same lens. I'm beginning to think I might be a little obsessed with this guy. I've seen all of his videos multiple times, so when this video got on my radar, I immediately noticed that not only did he rip off Soul Brothers' style, but he even stole entire lines and sentences. Here he is ripping off really basic things you could have changed to hide it, like the diagrams and method of highlighting examples while talking about them. It's utterly absurd how much of a ripoff this is. When someone pointed this out to Ouija, as if he needed to be told he'd done this, he added the video as a source deep in the description, claiming he quotes and references him. Yeah, and Diesel was just quoting and referencing Stardust Crusaders too. The really shitty thing about this though is that it completely reappropriates Soul Brothers' ultimate point. The source videos are fun and useful tutorials with the intent of informing and helping a group of people that could benefit from knowing. The fact the Blue Yeti isn't the apex of quality is worth talking about when discussing the craft, and more importantly, elevating voice acting to a craft is a really great thing to do. It's just a for fun or Skype microphone. It's, to actually quote Soul Brother, a toy. Ouija's version of the video makes this the front and center argument. The function of the video has become a long and unnecessary takedown of a microphone. The advice Ouija repackaged was good, very good, but it's been repackaged into a rant about a popular consumer-grade microphone. That's probably the most offensive part of this. One of the best tutorials on the internet has literally become a footnote in garbage clickbait. If that isn't the internet's effect on truth and reason in microcosm, then I don't don't know what is. Now you notice how this sounds all nice and clean and clear? And how this sounds like absolute total garbage? Ouija the God there, comparing a very expensive professional microphone setup to a microphone that sounds fine, especially compared to other USB microphones in that price range, or, you know, no microphone at all. Well that right there is the difference between a toy and a real audio setup. Yes, that right there is the difference, and we call that difference 650 US dollars. If you want to know what intellectual honesty looks like, you know that video I said inspired me to spend far too much money on some nice manual lenses? You can't watch that video anymore because Soul Brother took it down for some slight errors. Imagine that, Ouija, taking down a video because it's got mistakes in it. Can you imagine what it must be like to be that? Can you fucking imagine? But if you're a fan of Soul Brother like I am, this isn't the first time his work has been plagiarized. In December last year, a video entitled What Happened to Kentucky Fried Chicken, made by Austin McConnell, came out and went pretty viral. It currently has over 1.7 million views. Watching it, someone intimately familiar with Soul Brother's style will instantly recognize flourishes and stylistic choices all but unique to him. All right, check it out. So, all right, so check it. Talent, equipment, and availability. Showing weakness in any of these can manifest itself in you not getting paid. There are five keys to the success of your average fast food joint. Fail in any of these areas and folks aren't gonna wanna buy your product. Recognizable enough that someone noticed this and tipped Soul Brother off. When he asked him about it, McConnell openly claimed him as an inspiration. Now, this is an interesting creative gray area. No one's on the hook for being inspired by someone else's style or work. But completely jacking someone's style for attention is certainly a bad look. 
It's not uncommon in the YouTube community for someone to borrow someone else's ideas if they seem good or popular. The guy who first decided to overreact to Five Nights at Freddy's footage probably founded numerous careers for several people, including that of the game's creator. You really can't copyright a style or ideas, and that's a good thing. McConnell's poor ripoff is still better than the stuff he used to make before he was stealing stuff, and the YouTube jump scare economy has provided entertainment for millions. But there's a difference between saying something new and unique to you using a style inspired by others, and trying to be someone else. This comic persona is occasionally entertaining, but it's Soul Brothers comic persona. There's an unwritten rule in creative communities that this sort of thing makes you kind of a dick. Additionally, the very poor pacing and length of the video makes the style he assumed drag more than it should. It starts to feel repetitive and overly long, even though it's only eight minutes, which is something of an achievement. Style and tone and pacing are hard to master, and in borrowing surface elements from Soul Brother, he fails to accurately capture what makes that method good in the first place. He cites Soul Brother as an inspiration, and I strongly suspect that with time, McConnell will figure out a style that suits him better and is more appropriate for the work he ends up making. If you want to learn some useful tips about voice acting, or audio setups, or editing, or writing, or filmmaking, you can learn directly from the best. Soul Brother does workshops for $80 a piece, and I know people who can vouch for them being worth the money. Check the description for a link and some testimonials. So there's the first two stories about two very different kinds of plagiarism. I could bring up that this is a problem that the YouTube rational skeptic community also has, and lots of them are constantly accusing each other of ripping off their shtick. What a shock! They're so intellectually honest otherwise! But my third story today is going to be mine, because I'm selfish. A couple days ago, friend and estranged lover Bob Vids put out a video noting the similarities and criticising Ouija. It's pretty good, check it out. My original plan for this video was to just remake his entire video word for word, for a joke, but toward the end he made the comment that without building attitudes to calling out plagiarism when it happens in the YouTube community, it's never going to get discussed properly, and I'd much rather contribute to that than putting a lot of effort into a silly joke. So here. You might recall my amazing video about why Bloodborne's great. It was very well received creatively and culturally, and changed the world. One thing that most enthused scholars was my introduction and codification of a concept in game design theory I called play conditioning. My theory was sound, no one could possibly criticise it because it's perfect, and everyone loved it. So of course, like with all beautiful and perfect ideas, someone stole it! Let me introduce you to Lukey Poo. His video, Bloodborne Did Something Incredible, is a cheap knockoff of the general thesis of my video and of play conditioning, presenting it as if he just suddenly came up with it, coincidentally in regards to the same game as me four months after I did. Found them overly esoteric and difficult in a way that wasn't fun, and full of overly defensive get good spouting fanboys, and these people seem to be hardcore get good preaching masochistic troglodytes who members of the Souls community don't even recognize, rebutting it with a simple get good. Firstly, the most obvious one. There's no shield. The problem was all centered around one mechanic. In a word, shields. Bloodborne, a game about injecting yourself with increasing amounts of dangerous liquid, is itself the ultimate gateway drug. Giving you a high that essentially turns the game into a socially acceptable drug. A good deal of players will spend a lot of time with their shield up, playing it safe waiting for only the best possible moment to drop it, strike, and then bring it back up again. Gamers throw up their shield and dance around the enemy until there's an opening. They stab, they put the shield back up, rinse, and repeat. Maybe you shouldn't have rinsed and repeated my video, Luke. The almost inevitable death at this guy's hand things immediately communicates that you're going to be facing seemingly insurmountable odds. Immediately be greeted by a giant beast who would crush them repeatedly. He talks about how uninviting the previous games are, and how much they hammer home that you're gonna die, like I did. But as we learn later, he never played the previous games before Bloodborne, so to get across how uninvited he was, he has to use footage from the first game he played, which is Bloodborne. He's using footage of the game he's trying to say made the series more inviting to prove that the previous games were uninviting. Also, um, immediately greeted with a giant beast? Uh, Gasquigny isn't a giant by Souls game standards, you don't encounter him immediately, and he only even transforms into this monster after two thirds of the fight. Luke, this is fucking nonsense, what are you doing? This is a weird thing. Like, 
When I'm talking about people's inability to get into the games and how those people are dismissed by fanboys, I use footage from On the Bridge in Demon Souls. When he's saying what I said, but worse, he's using footage from a very similar area in Dark Souls 3. Why he thought to do that, I don't know. I guess he thought I used that footage for a good reason, so he had to as well. Well, uh, spoilers, I used that footage completely at random because I had no idea what to put there. So, uh, well done! You even managed to copy my laziness! Idiot! So he's just copied the bit on the bridge, right? That bit ends in my video like this. Then Bloodborne happened. I introduced Bloodborne, which, by the way, came out before Dark Souls 3, the game you were using footage from there, Luke. Uh, the music cuts to music from the game to be dramatic, and then I fade to the opening sequence of Bloodborne. Luke, copying not just my points, but their pacing and order, introduces Bloodborne and then uses an audio cue from Bloodborne, which I think is the only time he even thinks to do it in the video, when he's copying what I did. And they responded in 2015 with Bloodborne and then talks over the same piece of footage as me about what Bloodborne did and about how Miyazaki fixed the problem. In my video, I outline play conditioning here and slowly whittle down the problems that lead to people not enjoying the Souls games into early design elements and the shield, using examples of how other people who started on the earlier games played it. He just goes, oh, no, the problem's shields. Now, he played Bloodborne first, so how he knows shields are a problem, having only played that one and Dark Souls 3 afterwards, I don't know. My ideas and argument are so poorly mangled at this point, it's a little embarrassing to think he got the idea from me. Then, he rips off my jokey anecdote about Miyazaki in a boardroom meeting. Can you imagine being in the room when Hidetaka Miyazaki was looking at playtest footage of the previous games, and coming up with the concept for Bloodborne, and he was like, Hey, hey, take out the shields. Bad jokes aside, I can just picture the day that Miyazaki walked into the conference room, sat down at the head of the table, looked left, looked right at all of his development leads, and just said, get rid of the shields. No shields, ever. None. Okay, a one shield, but it's a joke. Put a joke in the arm description about them engendering passivity. Passivity. God, I can't do this voice. They took away all the shields in the game. Well, except for one in the base game, which proves my point with its in-game description, which reads, quote, shields are nice, but not if they engender passivity. My joke about what Miyazaki might say in a boardroom segs directly into this point. I make it into part of the joke, actually, and have him say that in the boardroom meeting. Luke just awkwardly segs from his half-hearted ripoff of that section to just be suddenly talking about the shield's item description. He isn't just copying what I say, he's copying the order I say it in. It wouldn't really have been that hard for him to make it less obvious. The immediate next section of my video is about the rallying system. Right after the item description, uh, he immediately fades into talking about the rally system, even using the exact same method of enlarging the health bar on the screen to demonstrate it better. I'm sure other people do this, but doing it immediately after badly copying a bunch of my talking points and also the order I say them in? Yeah, I wonder where Luke got this idea from. And I can personally attest to this. I had never played a Souls game before I played Bloodborne, and once I finished Bloodborne, I felt like a god. I wanted more. I wanted to taste that drug that I was talking about earlier again. So I went and I played Dark Souls 3 in the span of a couple of weekends. I became consumed with the series. And His personal attestment doesn't make any sense. If he hadn't played the previous games, how would he know they were uninviting or not fun to play, or how they would have conditioned him? He was smart enough to know not to steal my story about having a friend who tried the previous games and didn't enjoy them and then went back after Bloodborne to find he suddenly did, but not smart enough to substitute it with an anecdote that makes any sense at all. Additionally, in what is my real problem with his work here, his version of my arguments rest on hearsay and general ideas with no examples given and no experiences of his own to relate to about the games or examples of problems with the previous games, except of course that they have shields and encourage their overuse, which he just psychically knows is the problem despite having never played the previous games. He mangles my longer and more rigorous discussion of shields so badly, he essentially argues that shields are bad because they help with defense at all, missing my point that they're fine, but the previous game's design encourages overuse. These mistakes transform my ideas into versions incredibly easy for commenters to pick holes in. Inadvertently, this video is like a straw man version of my argument, but completely accidentally because he's trying to legitimately make it because he didn't understand what he was stealing. Unless, of course, Lukey Poo is destined 
to be an excellent contributor to design theory and just needed to get a foot in the door, which simply happened to be my foot. I dunno. I'd honestly preferred if you'd stolen more of my ideas. As it stands, this video is just insulting to its audience and the ideas you're trying to present. I'm not mad I was plagiarised really, I am being a bit hyperbolic here, but I am a little annoyed about the effects of plagiarism. Not to get too apocalyptic, but to me a cardinal sin is to make an idea look weak simply by presenting it poorly. I want to make videos where if I saw them, I'd be convinced and learn something and it would further a wider conversation about design or culture or whatever else the hell I'm talking about most of the time. If I saw this video, I'd think the idea was full of shit and write it off. I didn't talk about this much before because I didn't like the idea of going after people, you know, but Bob's right. If we don't talk about this when it happens and create that sort of culture, there's even less to stop this going on. And I like discussion and furthering of ideas. I want to see play conditioning looked at more closely so its parameters can be explored and shown in relation to other games. Not more people just re-coming up with it in regards to the same game even. The two most upvoted comments on that video are a comment making fun of how my video often finds itself in the related videos section of his, and a comment by me. And honestly, having me in your comment section is punishment enough. The economics of YouTube present a problem for the content of YouTube and the wider social conversations taking place through the medium. If you want to make a living on this shitty website, it's currently set up so that the best business practice is to see what's popular and make something similar. Often disgustingly similar. This stunts creativity and originality. Soul Brothers video essays are just a small piece of the stuff he makes. Most of the time he's making high effort redubs of anime or cool little animated things that are difficult to copy and not many people would even think to copy, because they're far from the most popular thing he does. But that kind of attitude, making what you feel is worth making, is an important one to have in a space widely dominated by people trying to make a living by being what already did well, but, you know, again and with their face on it. In days of old, entertainers and writers would measure success by how well regarded their work was, or in how much the wider discussion was furthered by their contribution. Nowadays you measure success by the amount of imitators you launched. So, special thanks to number one H Bomber guy fan Lukey Poo. I wish him best of luck in his endeavours, and hope he himself will one day produce something worth stealing. I doubt it though, I mean, Jesus Christ this video is poorly made. You used the same audio loop for like eight straight minutes. Hey Lukey Poo, I know this guy who does some really great editing workshops. Look him up, his name's Soul Brother. 